Hello. What I'd like to go over with uh, right now is the friction rate worksheet. So in the handouts that we were given prior to spring break, uh, it's also in Moodle in one of your PDF documents for AHR 211. You'll find the friction rate worksheet. It's also in your manual D book. Um, so what your instructions ask you to do this week is use the information that we worked with the first week we went online. Uh, your whole house CFM that you found that week, uh, and so forth. With that information, go to the packet that everyone receives prior to spring break that has your air handler, a package unit, a gas furnace, and a matching coal. And what you will do is choose one of the three systems to complete the friction rate worksheet. Okay. So first step is, again, using the information from that first week that we went online right after spring break. Uh, I think it was March 23rd. With that uh, heat loss, heat gain information, we'll pick a unit. So I'm going to start with this air handler. Uh, I refer you to the pages in the packet that you should uh, start with. So step one. Uh, on the worksheet, and we talked about this prior to break, there's nowhere on the worksheet for you to put the CFM that you need based on your work to find whole house CFM. So right here on the worksheet, uh, write out the CFM that you need based on your work uh, doing the whole house CFM calculation. OK, so like we did before break, write need. And then right beside that, you're going to put what you have from the equipment. So from your packet right here, we'll look at the different air handlers that are available. And we've also discussed this. The model number determines the air handler tonnage. So based on the loads from, again, that first week back information, the heat loss, heat gain from that week, we'll pick the air handler that's appropriate for uh, the heat loss, heat gain uh, that we have for that home. So I'm going to start with this first air handler. Let's say that's the proper air handler. Look at the model number. Uh, that's a ARUF 25. We know that we divide that number by 12, and that's the tonnage. It should be a 24, but it's not. So sometimes we, we deal with that. So that first air handler is a two-ton air handler. The ARUF 29 is a two-and-a-half-ton air handler. Uh, the 31 is a two-and-a-half-ton air handler with a little higher capacity than two-and-a-half-ton, but still a two-and-a-half-ton in our world. Uh, the 37 is a three ton. So in that sequence, you get the idea. Um, so based on your needed CFM, you're going to come to the air handler that is appropriate for the load that you have in that assignment from the first week uh, that we went online. And you're going to try to find a speed that will match your needed CFM. Uh, when you're looking this chart up, the static pressure, inches of water column, we want to start at about a 0.5. We talked about that also. It's in your notes and directions for the week, but I'm saying it again. We need to start with about 0.5, which in our world is about what we call 50 cents, if you remember that from our prior to spring break discussions, because we're going to start spending money from what we start with. And that 0.5 is a good ballpark uh, starting point. So under 0.5, for that two-ton air handler, we see that on low, you would get 490 CFM, medium 750, and high 965. So based on what you need, you would find a speed that would fit your need relatively close. It does not have to be perfect. It can be a little bit higher, a little bit lower, but it needs to be reasonably close. We would love for that speed selection to be on medium, but if we have to go to a high speed, that's okay. Uh, we're just trying to get the idea here. Uh, so once you have done that, you found the proper air handler. You have your static pressure and the speed. Then on your friction rate worksheet, you need to indicate the model number of the air handler that you need. The speed you're going to set that unit to and the CFM that you're going to get from that unit at that speed. OK. So. Once you have selected that unit found the static pressure, found the CFM. You'll write the static pressure right up here at the top. And that's 50 cents, like we talked about, 0.5 in our world of talking about money. 
Then step two are component losses. Manual D discusses component losses. So you can look that up in the index or the table of contents and, and read about losses. We talked about that. So anything that's in the airstream is going to have a restriction to the airflow. Uh, so as you're looking through the packets for the air handler, for the gas furnace, for the package unit, whichever unit you're looking for, you will look through those packets and see if you can find any kind of restriction due to an air filter. It'll be in the fine print or the uh, notes under the airflow data. Uh, if it's an air handler, there may be electric resistance heat. Uh, number factor in, we talked about electric resistance heats, generally 0.011, one, two, three cents, very little restriction because of the way they're configured. Uh, but if there's not any information there, don't worry about it. Uh, mainly for us, we will have a filter. We talked about a filter. A general cheap filter is a 0.1 restriction, 0.10. We talked about a dime. So if you start with 50 cents and you have an air filter, which we all do, then you subtract that 10 cent from the 50 cents and you have 40 cents left. So everybody will have an air filter. Everybody will have a supply outlet, a return grill, and a balancing damper. So the walk-on supply outlet grill that you have in your floor or your ceiling, those are three cent. The return grill, three cent. The damper, three cent. So your manual D shows you that in every one of their examples where you see a friction rate worksheet. Um, it's in some of the notes we have on Moodle, but I'm telling you again that everybody will have a filter. Basic cheap one is 0.1. The supply outlet return grill and damper will all be 0.03 each. OK, if there's anything else that we put in the system down the road, if you have had HR 255 or if you will take it this fall, we know if we put a humidifier in uh, some more efficient filter, higher, more expensive filter, there are going to be different restrictions here. But we're not getting that detailed now. If you choose to, that is wonderful. If you've had 255, you should recall some of that information. Go for it. Put it in here. If not, don't worry about it. OK, so add up your restrictions. And those are your component losses. OK, so step three is simply take your 50 cents that you started with, subtract your losses that you found here. And that is the available inches of water column that we have from your air handler or furnace. All right. That's all there is to it. Step four is the total effective length. That's the assignment we just completed last week. So I will give you that number. Uh, I'm not asking us to do that this week. That was last week. We've gone over that. We know about effective lengths and what fittings uh, are equivalent to if we use an elbow or transition and so forth. Uh, but that would be step four, okay? Uh, we're not worried about that this week. I will give you those numbers if we need a step four. Um, step five is now, based on your work <clears throat> from selecting the unit, determining the available static pressure, I will provide a the effective length number. You go down to the chart and you simply locate your available static down on the bottom, the total effective length of the supply plus the return duct, and wherever they intersect, that is the friction rate that we will use to size duct. Okay, so everything that we have done all through manual D is to get to this point to locate the number on this graph so that we can now size duck. Without that, we're guessing. And you're going to hear a lot of guess, if you, guesses. If you go online and you YouTube some of this stuff or whatever, or look at some of the slide rules that we have in the field, people will say, well, I'll just set the duck rule to point 0.1. You know, six inch duck can handle 100 CFM. All of that is completely incorrect. Uh, a lot of rules of thumb that are completely inaccurate could have been close back in 1960, 1970, when we had sheet metal duct. It is completely inaccurate for flex duct uh, in the systems that we have today. Uh, so when you've done all this work, what we would hope is that your friction rate should be within the range of 0.06 to about 0.09. All right. So you're looking for a 0.06 to a 0.09 range. So if you're not on 
the 0.06 to 0.09 arrows here, the lines in that range, then you need to reevaluate your system. You either need to make this duct system more efficient to lower the TEL or reduce some of the uh, pressure losses or reset the blower speed and adjust the blower speed to a different unit external static pressure, maybe increase to a 0.6, strike through your information and go again with the airflow that you would have available at a 0.6, okay? So if you have to do that in your manual D, you'll see examples where they have done just that. They've gone through, completed a worksheet, came down here and said that won't work and had to go back up to the top of the worksheet and you'll see where they struck through numbers went back to their information from the units, found another value and went again. And that's perfectly fine. That's what we do. That's the purpose of all of this. All right. So that's the basic uh, friction rate worksheet. And again, everything we've done from whole house CFM, cooling factor, room CFM, TEL, all of that work is to get to this very point. Okay. So uh, once again, that's the air handler information. Some of you may choose to do an air handler. Some of you may choose to do a package unit. If you do the package unit, I will refer you to the proper page for the package unit in order to locate the airflow information. Uh, and those airflow data points are found right here. Okay. And again, it's, it's labeled a little bit different. And that's just the world we live in. If you look over here, it doesn't look like the same chart we just looked at same manufacturer but they've written it differently they have esp external static pressure they do not spell it out like they did in the air handler that's it's the same thing uh oriented a little bit different the static pressure is over here on the left instead of up at the top and then you'll notice you have cfm and heat speed um cooling speeds and so forth um based on those set points all right heat speed, cooling speeds. So T1, T2, T3, T4. These are some of the new uh, blower motors that we deal with. Not necessarily ECM motors, but like an X13 motor uh, that we'll talk about later on uh, in our studies. Okay, so that's the package unit. Um, some of you may choose to do a gas furnace. That's okay. The gas furnace right here. The gas furnace, keep in mind, there is a little bit of a difference with the gas furnace. For the gas furnace, you will need to pick out a furnace that will provide the heating capacity based on the heat loss, okay? So for the air handler, we're looking for the heat gain for cooling to get the proper air handler. For the gas furnace, we need the heat loss to pick the proper furnace out. Once you pick the furnace, the airflow data is the same as we have just discussed. Dif same looking chart. Okay. The difference is right here. Once you pick the furnace out, now you have to also select the indoor coil, the evaporator that sits on top of it. So thinking back to our units in this lab, over on the exterior wall where we have our gas furnaces, if they're connected to an outdoor unit, you have to have an evaporator on that furnace. And that's what we have here. So where the difference comes in Based on the capacity, the load from our manual J information that we use to determine the whole house CFM, you will need to come in and pick out the proper evaporator to go on your furnace. Just like a air handler for a heat pump, these evaporators have model numbers. And in this case, the numbers are divisible by 12. So you can determine a ton and a half, a two ton, a two and a half, three ton, based on the number divisible by 12. Two ton divided by 12, that's a 24. A 36 would be a three, an 18, a ton and a half, a 30, a two and a half ton, and so forth. And the deal here is when you find your evaporator coil, you're looking for the restriction of that coil because it's in the airstream. The air handler, they know the coil that's in that air handler. So that is part of the factors when they do the, the formulas. For the furnace, the furnace manufacturer does not know which coal is going on that furnace. So you have to find the restriction for that coal. And of course, most of these will say wet and dry. It's going to be wet. It's running in the cooling mode. It's going to have moisture on it. So find the airflow you're blowing through that coil. 
and under wet for the proper capacity, get the restriction. And the restrictions are fairly high here. We're talking about, you know, in some cases, 0 0.17, 0 0.2 and some change. So when you're completing your friction rate, rate worksheet, if you're doing gas with an evaporator where it says direct expansion coal, you would include that restriction right, right there on that line, right? If you're doing the heat pump air handler with a package unit, those factors are already part of the calculations. If you're doing a gas furnace, you have to include the coal, okay? That basically walks you through the friction rate worksheet. I think you'll have no problem. Watch this video again, slow it down, replay it, read my notes, and I think you'll be in good shape, okay? Good luck to everybody. Have a great week.